Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare, uh, I beg your pardon, State Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, uh, Secretary Health, Secretary Science and Technology, uh, Executive Directors from two very important TB initiatives, the TB Vaccine Initiative and the Global Partnership for TB, DDG from WHO, and Mona, whose story we have just heard, and experts from the TV world who are gathered here today. A very good evening to you. It's my privilege to be here today amongst you on a subject which is so important for the world, but it is extremely important for the Southeast Asia region where almost 50% of the global TB burden lies. And for us, it has special significance because over the years, the last few years, we have been focusing a lot on TB elimination, which is a shared objective, of course, with you and us, since we are looking for elimination of TB by 2030. Ending TB means ending a disease which is responsible for the death of 1.7 million people around the world. It also means that 10 million people who are infected annually from TB would no longer really suffer that way. Ending TB also means drawing to a close centuries of lost productivity because those who lose their lives for TB, as we've heard, very often do so at the prime of their lives, that is before the age of 50. And ending TB also means freeing the poor and the marginalized from a disease that most severely impacts the vulnerable groups. Indeed, indeed ending TB will make a range of social economic aspirations possible. Aspirations like defeating poverty and reducing inequality. Aspirations that reflect the full breadth of the sustainable development agenda. And as I said before, nowhere is this more important than in the Southeast Asia region. The Southeast Asia region, as you're all aware, has one quarter of the world's population. And yet the TB burden is almost 50%. In 2016, about 40% of the global TB deaths occurred in this region, which has six of the world's top 30 high burden countries and one of the world's top 10 high, highest incidence countries. Notably, the region also has 30% of the world's MDR TB. As the numbers suggest, Progress is dependent on what happens here. Given the commitment and resolve which you all share, I'm confident that we will be able to make bold progress to achieve our bold goals. In the last year, in March, for example, member states in this region issued a call for action. And this was really the ministers of this region who got together and pledge to accelerate progress and achieve the 2030 goal and its time-bound targets. In doing so, they recognize that present rates of decline are inadequate and that intensified action is needed. At the same meeting, we could identify progress towards ending TB as the regional aid flagship priority area, pledging WHO's unqualified support to member states to end TB. That momentum was reflected at the global level in November 2017, when member states from across the globe met for a global ministerial meeting which was held in Moscow. Importantly, the outcomes of that meeting will inform deliberations at the UN General Assembly's high-level meeting on TB, which was mentioned a little while earlier. Both in our region and across the world, the will to battle and overcome TB is at an all-time high. That will and resolve is crucial if we are to achieve our time-bound targets, including 
a 90% reduction in the number of TB-related deaths and an 80% reduction in the case incidence by 2030. More importantly, it also includes ensuring that there are zero catastrophic costs associated with TB by 2020. Distinguished participants, let me be very clear. Though crucially important, resolve alone is not enough. As our own modeling clearly demonstrates, ending TB requires access to more robust preventive measures. Without them, we cannot achieve our goals. Such measures would include introducing a biomarker for TB, followed by safe preventive therapy. And as we are gathered here to discuss, this could also include developing and rolling out a vaccine that cuts the chain of transmission completely. At both the regional and global level, investing in product development and implementation research has been identified as critical to our success. All stakeholders agree that at just 0.25% of the 265 billion US dollars that are spent on medical research annually, the funding which is allocated to TB research needs to dramatically increase. In fact, we know that each year we need 1.8 billion US dollars for research and development, which includes 0.8 billion per annum for drugs, 0.7 billion per annum for diagnostics, and 0.3 billion per annum for vaccine development. Nevertheless, despite these funding shortfalls, at present, there are more than 15 vaccines in various stages of trial, ranging from phase one to phase three. Some, I am informed, are in the preclinical development stages. I look forward to the results, as I'm sure you do. Still, I can't help but think of where we would be if we had the required resources. I'm informed that this forum will review progress and share the latest TB-related research and data. I also understand you will identify and promote innovative and transformative approaches to vaccine research and development. Also on the agenda is strengthening partnerships and collaboration to accelerate research and development, as well as promote global recognition of the role vaccines can play in ending TB. I wish you fruitful and engaging deliberations. You have an opportunity that must be grasped. As you do that, I urge you to consider how best member states and stakeholders can work together to invest in research and development and effectively implement the product of these efforts. Several countries in the region have tremendous potential in this regard. Above all, I urge you to consider how you can use this meeting to further our joint objective and help develop and implement an effective TB vaccine among other research and development best buys. By doing so, you will be making a substantial contribution to meeting our time-bound targets and to achieving our goal of ending TB by 2030. There could be no greater imperative. There could be no greater achievement. In the Southeast Asia region, as across the world, we must harness current momentum and accelerate action to end TB once and for all. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.